Introduction to Pediatric First Aid Topics to be covered in this module What is Pediatric First Aid? Provision of First Aid in Early Years Settings Role of First Aiders Requirements in Childcare Minimising the Risk of Infection Personal Protective Equipment First Aid Equipment Storage and Administration of Medicines Incident Recording and Reporting Summary Assessment questions will be included at the end of each module to ensure that you have understood the information. What is Pediatric First Aid? The basic understanding of first aid is the initial treatment given to sick or injured people until they are seen by registered medical professionals. Being a first aider and having the ability to care for fellow employees and bystanders is an admirable skill set and benefits the whole community. But the ability to be able to perform first aid on children and babies takes that skill to a whole other level. You'll need to take on other considerations, including increased empathy and patience. You will also need to change existing procedures, CPR, AED, etc., to accommodate a child's frame. The term paediatric basically covers the treatment of any child who has not yet reached puberty. This also covers infants or babies under the age of one year old. As a parent or a responsible adult, being trained in paediatric first aid will allow you to care for the next generation and possibly preserve an important young life. Provision of first aid in early years settings. UK Acts are in place to ensure that the appropriate number of paediatric first aiders, emergency first aiders and basic first aiders are in place at any workplace or premises used by the general public. For childminders, teachers and other individuals that come into contact with children, there are strict regulations that are set up by organisations like Ofsted, Office for Standards in Education, Children's Services and Skills, LEAs, Local Education Authorities, and the Child Care Register. As a paediatric first aider, you would be expected to liaise with appropriate site managers and or fellow first aiders to make sure there are first aid kits and emergency equipment immediately available as well as rooms and other facilities, running water, etc. Incident reporting and accident management systems in place, accident book, etc. Trained personnel in place at any one time to take care of and treat children. This is especially important in child-centric settings such as nurseries, creches, schools, leisure centres and any local community centre. Role of first aiders When attending to a young casualty, a paediatric first aider has four priorities, summed up by the acronym PAAP, PARP. Preserve life. Perform every action you can to sustain the well-being of a child until emergency services arrive. Alleviate suffering, comforting the child on an emotional and physical basis, along with appropriate pain relief. Prevent wounds from worsening. Treat the child's wounds as best you can, immobilise limbs if necessary, and dress incisions or burns. Promote recovery. Be mindful of a child's reaction to shock and ensure that professional medical services are aware of the situation. As a paediatric first aider, you also have to ask the following five questions as to your place of work or premises. 1. 
What is the risk to children? Is it a public place or closed environment? Are there exposed machinery, bodies of water, access to high areas, etc. available? 2. How many employees are around at any time? Take into consideration holidays and sickness. 3. How many first aiders do you need in the area? Think about possible emergencies and the likelihood of children being involved. 4. What accidents or emergencies have previously taken place there? Use this knowledge to understand what equipment and training you may need. 5. What other factors do you need to consider? Are there regular visitors? Do children have regular access, etc.? Requirements for childcare If you are ever responsible for looking after children that are aged five years or younger, you should be part of the Early Years Register. To qualify for this, you need to learn and adhere to all the standards set out in the EYFS, Early Years Foundation Stage Framework. If you hold responsibility for children's safety over the age of five, the core requirements are as follows. You must ensure that children in your care do not come to any harm, either accidental or through intentional punishment. You must ensure that a responsible adult is present at all times and the children are never unsupervised. You must be able to manage the children's behaviour in an acceptable and appropriate manner. You should never expose the children to smoking, drinking or drug taking. You must have someone over the age of 18 present at all times. And of course, there must be immediate access to the skills of a paediatric first aider. Minimising the risk of infection The efforts of a first aider to minimise cross-infection is even more important when dealing with children and babies. When treating children, a paediatric first aider must ensure that all medical waste is disposed of responsibly and that they protect themselves, the casualty and any bystanders from possible contamination. They must also package any used or exposed dressings or bandages in marked medical waste bags coloured orange or yellow. Wash their hands before and after treatment with antibacterial agents. Wear disposable gloves during treatment. Wear other barrier devices, if appropriate, face mask, etc. Ensure that they don't directly touch or breathe or cough over an open wound of a casualty. Cover and dress open cuts, sores or burns. Dispose of any sharp utensils or syringes appropriately using hospital facilities. These guidelines are especially important during viral infections or illnesses like tuberculosis and croup. Personal protective equipment PPE, also known as personal protective equipment, greatly helps protect the first aider and the child from any possible secondary infections or cross-contamination. The items basically create a protective barrier between the casualty and first aider without affecting the treatment in any way. Examples of this equipment include eye protection, safety goggles or similar, hand protection, nitrile, powder free or latex free, disposable gloves in case of allergies, face protection, paediatric pocket masks are storable and will protect from blood, vomit 
or viruses being inhaled or passed between bodies. The type of PPE obtained will depend on the environment and risk assessment surveys. First aid equipment. Like PPE, the types and amounts of first aid equipment will depend on the requirements of the company and or premises, along with the average age and status of the children involved. However, as a bare minimum, a first aid kit should include at least the following items. 20 differently sized plasters. 6. Adequately sized sterile wound dressings. 2. Large sized sterile wound dressings. 2. Triangular bandages for head wounds, hand dressing and arm slings. 3. Pairs of disposable gloves. 2. Sterile iPads. 6. Safety pins. A leaflet or booklet with instructions for basic first aid techniques. A proactive paediatric first aider will also look at adding other equipment to this range, such as round-edged scissors, wet wipes, a disposable apron and other appropriate items. Immediate access to hot and cold running water should also be considered. Storage and administration of medicines. Along with other considerations, the storage and responsible handling of medications must also be planned by a paediatric first aider. As far as simple storage is concerned, the inquisitive nature and sheer ingenuity of young minds must be taken into account. Never assume something is childproof on simple face value and because somebody told you so. Therefore, any area that holds a first aid kit or stored medications in the vicinity of children should ensure these restrictions are in place. You have the consent of a child's parents to administer any kind of medicine. You have a property or company or personal policy or procedure for safely administering medicine. Personal medications for a child who is being treated for a known condition should be stored and labelled as that child's property and kept in the original bottle or container. All medicine should be stored somewhere that can be secured and protected from a child's attention. Incident recording and reporting. Just like any emergency or accident, an incident involving the injury of a child needs to be recorded and filed by an employer or company. This should involve the use of an accident book, as specified by RIDA 2013. Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations. This information should be recorded on easily accessible media and be available for future reference. The details should include The name of the child casualty The details of the injury and first aid administered The date, time and location of the incident the name, signature and contact details of the paediatric first aider. What happened to the casualty following the incident. However, serious accidents involving children usually require an extra layer of reporting with various other organisations such as Ofsted and HSE, Health and Safety Executive, who also need to be informed. The local child protection agency may need to be included in the information chain as well, depending on the circumstance. Summary In this module we have covered the following points. Paediatric first aid involves the treatment of children of a specific age range. An employer or property owner is legally required to have the necessary number of paediatric first aiders on site at any time. 
A paediatric first aider has four primary objectives when treating a casualty. Childcare requirements must be considered by a paediatric first aider as well as equipment. There may be extra organisations to alert during an accident involving a child.